Hello, I'm John Paul Taylor. Some of my friends call me JP. And I'd like to share one of the books I've written with you. It's called Getting to Know Sea Turtles with the Sea Turtle Experts. I think you'll like it. And if you're ready, let's dive in. Getting to Know Sea Turtles with the Sea Turtle Experts Sea turtles are amazing animals. They live in the warmer waters of the oceans all around the world. In this book, you will learn about the different kinds of sea turtles. You will also meet some real sea turtle scientists. They will share interesting facts about sea turtles with you. So, are you ready? Just turn the page and let's get started. Meet the sea turtle scientists. These are the sea turtle experts who shared some interesting facts about sea turtles with me. There's Dr. Justin, Dr. Stephanie, scientists Dennis, Dr. Terry, and Dr. Daniel. We'll see their comments in little boxes that appear throughout the book. In all the world, there are only seven kinds of sea turtles. Their names are Loggerhead, Leatherback, Green, Hawksbill, Kemp's Ridley, Olive Ridley, and Flatback. In this book, you will learn about all of them. All turtles are reptiles. A reptile is an animal with a backbone and skin that's covered with scales or plates. Reptiles are cold-blooded. That means their body temperature changes with the outside temperature. Most reptiles lay eggs with soft shells. Reptiles also breathe air. But sea turtles live in the sea. How do they breathe? Even though they live in the ocean, sea turtles breathe air like we do. They come up to the surface and get air with their nose. But they can hold their breath for a very long time. If they are sleeping, they can hold their breath for several hours. Sea turtles are different from most other turtles. Since they live in the ocean, they have flippers for swimming instead of legs and feet for walking. Like us, sea turtles have to drink fresh water. But the water of the ocean is very salty. So sea turtles have special pockets in their heads called salt glands that help them get rid of the salt in the water. On these pages, you see a diagram of a sea turtle. Along the top, you see scoots, the plates of a sea turtle shell, carapace, the top shell, then there's eye, nose, front flipper, and in that little circle you see claw. Most sea turtles have claws. Along the bottom, the word is plastron. That's the name for the bottom of the shell. In the back, there's rear flipper, which of course they have two, and the tail. Most sea turtles come on shore during the night to lay their eggs. They crawl on the beach and dig their nest in the sand. The nests they dig look like an upside down light bulb. When the mother sea turtle finishes laying her eggs, she covers the nest with sand. Then she crawls back across the beach and into the sea. Sea turtle eggs look like ping pong balls. The shells are soft, not hard like a chicken egg. The females, mother turtles, are careful to dig their nests above the high tide line so water from the ocean will not reach them. If water gets into the nest, the babies in the eggs could drown. Most sea turtle eggs hatch around 60 days after being laid. And in the box, scientist Dennis says, the temperature inside a sea turtle nest determines if the hatchlings will be male or female. Cooler nests have more male hatchlings. Warmer nests have more females. Sea turtle hatchlings, babies, 
have a special part to their upper jaw called a caruncle. They use it to break out of their eggs. The caruncle is like a temporary tooth. The caruncle falls off after they've used it. Once they are out of their eggs, the hatchlings wait together in the nest. When the time is right, usually at night, they all work together to climb out. The hatchlings head for the natural light of the ocean, but other lights around the beach, like street lights, parking lots, homes, and cars, may make them crawl the wrong way. They must crawl as quickly as possible to avoid predators, animals who would eat them, like birds and crabs. Once they reach the ocean, some sea turtles swim to an area called the Sargasso Sea. This is an area where there are large mats of seaweed that float on the surface of the ocean. It gives sea turtles and other young animals a good place to live while they are growing up. And in the box on the picture, scientist Dennis says, as hatchlings leave the nest and head to the water, things on the beach can trap or block them. So remember, to fill in any holes you dig, knock your sand castles down, and pick up anything you brought before you leave. A sea turtle's life could depend on it. On these pages, you see a big photograph of seaweed on the ocean. And in the little blue box, it says, the large mats of brown seaweed are called sargassum. Sargassum is a kind of algae it has leaves and branches. It also has berries that help it float in the water. In the little box, Dr. Justin says, Sargassum gives turtles a safe place to hide from predators and food to eat, like barnacles, crab larvae, and fish larvae. When they get older, sea turtles return to areas closer to shore. The leatherback is the largest of all the sea turtles. They live in the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans around the world. Leatherbacks do not have scales on their shells. They have thick black skin that stretches over the bones of their shell. The shell has ridges that go from the front to the back. Leatherback sea turtles have really big front flippers. Their back flippers are shaped like paddles. They do not have claws on their flippers. Leatherbacks eat mostly jellyfish. Since plastic bags look a lot like jellyfish, leatherbacks sometimes eat them and can get very sick or even die. Leatherback sea turtles are great swimmers. They are found in more places than any other reptile on the planet. Adult leatherbacks can grow to be five to six feet long. They can weigh over a thousand pounds. Leatherback sea turtles can live to be over 40 years old. And in the little box, Dr. Daniel says, Leatherbacks are amazing animals. They can dive deeper than a nuclear submarine. They have leathery skin, not a hard shell, so their shell can compress and not crack when they dive. Green sea turtles live in the warmer parts of the ocean around the world. They nest in over 80 countries. Green sea turtles are the largest of all the hard-shelled sea turtles. The leatherback is much bigger, but does not have a hard shell. Can you guess why they are called green sea turtles? It's not because they are green on the outside. Their inside fat layers are green. Why? Adult green sea turtles are herbivores. They eat plants. And they especially love sea grasses. There is even a type of grass called turtle grass. The female turtles lay around 110 to 120 eggs in each nest. The eggs hatch about 60 days later. Like loggerheads, baby green sea turtles swim to the Sargasso Sea, 
to spend their early years. Adults grow to be three to four feet long. They weigh between 250 and 400 pounds. In the box, Dr. Daniel says, sea turtles can be curious and have a bit of a personality. Green turtles tend to be fairly mellow. Like green sea turtles, loggerheads live in the warmer areas of the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans around the world. They also live in the Mediterranean Sea. They get their name from their large head and strong jaws. These powerful jaws allow them to eat shellfish like crabs, whelks, and conchs by crushing their shells. The top of a loggerhead shell is a reddish brown color. Adult female loggerheads lay about a hundred eggs in each nest. They often nest three to five times a season. After about two months, the hatchlings crawl out of the nest and to the water. Sometimes predators like fire ants, crabs, raccoons, and dogs can eat the babies. Adults usually grow to be between two and a half and three and a half feet long. Loggerheads weigh about 200 to more than 350 pounds. In the box, Dr. Justin says, loggerhead turtles can lay more than three to five nests in a season. We actually had a loggerhead tie the world record for the most number of nests laid with eight but six is our average number of nests. Hawksbill sea turtles live in tropical, which means warmer, waters around the world. They are named for the way their heads look. They have a mouth that looks like the beak of a hawk. This lets them get into places where they find their food. Their favorite food is sea sponges. These sponges live in coral reefs like those you see in the photo. Hawksbills will also eat other small animals including squid, shrimp, and jellyfish. They are famous for their beautiful shells. The shell is more rounded in the front and comes to a point in the back. Sadly, in some places people still make and sell jewelry made from hawksbill shells. This is one of the reasons hawksbills are so endangered. Hawksbill sea turtles lay an average of 130 to 160 eggs. They grow to be 2 to 3 feet long and weigh between 100 and 150 pounds. And in the box, Dr. Terry says, Hawksbill sea turtles spend most of their time around coral reefs. They help keep the coral reefs healthy by feeding on sponges to keep their populations in balance. The Kemp's Ridley is the smallest of all the sea turtles. They are also the most endangered of all sea turtles. Adult Kemp's Ridleys live in the shallow waters along the coast of the Gulf of Mexico. Younger Kemp's Ridleys travel along the coast of the United States from Florida all the way to New England Kemp's Ridley sea turtles have strong jaws. This helps them crush and eat their favorite foods like shrimp, crabs, and clams. They also eat fish and jellyfish. Kemp's Ridleys and Olive Ridleys are the only two species, kinds, of sea turtles that nest in what scientists call an arabada. This is when hundreds of female turtles come on shore to nest all at the same time. Each nest contains about a hundred eggs. After 50 to 60 days, the eggs hatch and the hatchlings all scramble toward the sea. Adult Kemp's Ridleys grow to be about two feet long. They weigh between 70 and 100 pounds. In the box, scientist Dennis says, most sea turtles nest on many beaches across many countries, but Kemp's Ridley turtles do almost all of their nesting 
on a stretch of beaches from central Mexico to southwest Texas along the western Gulf of Mexico. On these pages is a really nice photograph of sea turtles at the beach. And in the box, Dr. Stephanie says, the biggest olive ridley arabadas are along the coast of India and the Pacific coast of Costa Rica. Kemp's Ridley Arabadas only happen in a very small area on the coast of the Gulf of Mexico. The Olive Ridley is the second smallest of all the sea turtles. They live in the warmer parts of the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans around the world. Olive Ridleys have a heart-shaped shell. Hatchlings are charcoal gray. Adult shells are darker olive green color. That is how they got their name. Each of their flippers may have one or two claws. Olive Ridleys are omnivores. They eat animals and plants. They eat algae as well as lobsters, shrimps, crabs, fish, and jellyfish. Like Kemp's Ridleys, Olive Ridley sea turtles often nest in what scientists call an arabada. This is when hundreds of female turtles come on shore to nest all at the same time. Their nests usually contain about a hundred eggs. After 50 to 60 days, the eggs hatch and the hatchlings all head toward the sea together. Adult Olive Ridleys grow to be two to two and a half feet long. They weigh between 75 and 100 pounds. In the box, Dr. Stephanie says, Olive Ridley turtles spend most of their life in the open ocean far away from land. During their time at sea, they can dive over 200 meters. That's more than 500 feet deep. Can you tell how the flatback sea turtle got its name? Of course! It's because its shell is so flat compared to all the other sea turtles. The shell is smooth looking and curves up at the edges. Flatback sea turtles do not swim all over the ocean. As you can see in the map, they stay in the waters around Australia. Flatback sea turtles lay about 50 eggs in their nests. That's about half as many as the other sea turtles but the eggs and the hatchlings are bigger than most of the others. Sometimes saltwater crocodiles attack the females as they are nesting on the beach. What do they eat? Flatbacks are omnivores. That means they eat both animals and plants. They feed mostly on animals like shrimp, crabs, soft corals, and jellyfish, but sometimes will eat seaweed too. Adult flatbacks can weigh up to 200 pounds or more and are about three feet long. Scientists believe they can live to be 50 to 100 years old. And in the box you see a map that says Australia. The dangers of being a sea turtle. Fishing gear, like lines, hooks, and nets, can trap and injure or kill sea turtles. The turtles are often caught in nets and pulled aboard ships. Ghost gear, long fishing lines and nets that have been cut or let go by fishing boats is a big problem in many areas of the ocean. Boats are a big danger for sea turtles. Many turtles live near the shore where lots of boats come and go. They must come up to breathe and sometimes relax just floating at the surface of the water where they can be hit and injured by boats. Predators like crabs, raccoons, foxes, and even dogs and fire ants will get into sea turtle nests and eat the eggs. Hatchlings on the beach may be attacked by birds. When they reach the ocean, hatchlings may be eaten by fish and other predators in the water. And in the box next to Dr. Terry's picture, in the hospital, 
we see many sea turtles with injuries from fishing gear. They may have swallowed a fish hook or become tangled in fishing line. We also see turtles with injuries from boat strikes. Sometimes sea turtles get tangled in trash that is floating in the ocean. They may even eat pieces, especially plastic, and become very sick. Building Construction Many beaches where sea turtles used to nest now have big buildings on them. This can cause the nesting females to become confused and even lost. Sea turtles have even been seen falling into swimming pools. Lights around nesting beaches can be very bad for sea turtles. Hatchlings normally head to the sea going towards the lighter horizon of the ocean. Lights in parking lots and buildings and even headlights and flashlights can lead them in the wrong direction. And this is the last page of the book with the photo at the bottom of the little leatherback sea turtle heading toward the ocean. And on this page you see the different places where I've gotten some information for my book. And at the top it says references. Thanks for reading it with me.